this painting by Siga Coda, The Washing of Feet, we look on as Jesus washes the feet of Peter. With one hand, Peter protests, but with the other, he embraces Jesus, perhaps expressing his incomprehension and confusion. This evening, we remember the events surrounding the last meal shared by Jesus with his friends only hours before his arrest. Within a day, his life will have been offered up. We recall this Last Supper and its origins in the Jewish Passover. We remember that Jesus took the role of a servant to his disciples and friends washing them. We remember those who count themselves his friends allow themselves to be washed. And we recollect the farewells and Jesus going out into the night to wrestle with God and with himself. Together as a dispersed community of faith, we tell the story and participate in this chain of events. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this night. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We light this candle to welcome in the Shalom of God to this home. Peace be on this gathering this night. Let us make our prayers of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. When we are taking our ease rather than watching with you, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we bestow a kiss of peace and yet nurse enmity in our hearts, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we strike at those who hurt us, rather than stretch out our hands to bless. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we deny that we know you, for fear of the world and its scorn, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The prayer for this day. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ was obedient to the end and drank the cup prepared for him. May we who share his table watch with him through the night of suffering and be faithful. Amen. Amen. We listen now to the telling of the Passover story. While the Israelites were still in bondage in the land of Egypt, the Lord said to Moses and his brother Aaron in the land of Egypt, You must tell everyone. On the 10th of this month, each household must take, a, must take and slaughter a lamb without blemish. You must... Put some of the blood on the doorposts and, the lintels. and the lintels of your houses. That night the lamb is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. You must not have anything left over. Whatever is not eaten must be burned. You shall eat it standing up, with your shoes and coats on, and with a staff in your hand. You we must eat it that. quickly. 
this. This is the Passover. Passover in honor of the Lord. On this night, I am going to go through the whole land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn in the land, man and beast alike. The blood of the lamb will serve to mark the house where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you will escape the destruction. I am the Lord. And so each year, the people of God remembered and celebrated this feast in his honour. Parents explained its meaning to their children and they in turn explained it to their children. Why is this night different from all the other nights? Once we were slaves in the land of Egypt, but the Lord rescued us on this holy night. That is why this night is special and different from all other nights. Why on this night do we eat only unleavened, unleavened bread? We eat unleavened bread because there was no time that night to let it rise. Why do... Why on... Why on... This, this night do we eat bread... Bitter herbs. Bitter herbs? We eat bitter herbs to remind us of the bitterness of slavery. Why do we eat standing. standing up? We eat standing up because our ancestors were ready to go that night without a moment's delay. We do these things in honour of the Passover of the Lord. Green herbs symbolise spring and rebirth, dipped in salt water for tears. Harasset, apple and dried fruit, symbolise mortar with which the Israelites lay their bricks. The scorched egg reminds us of sacrifice. The roasted shank bone of the Passover lamb. Our ancestors celebrated the Passover, carrying the story forward. And at the end of that time, Jesus, God's anointed one, came to celebrate it on his last night with his friends. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God in Jesus, his anointed one. Blessed be God in Jesus, his anointed one. Blessed be God. In Jesus, his anointed one, our new Passover lamb. Blessed be God in Jesus, his anointed one, our new Passover lamb. Let us listen now to an account of that last supper by one who was present that night. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is from John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table and took, him, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around himself. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, 
You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you, he said. He knew what he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, for, for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this night, Jesus and his friends gather for Passover, taking it for granted, it seems, that even in restricted, pressured times, they will share a meal together to remember and to remember the faithfulness of God who feeds them in the wilderness when they are at their most anxious. It is at this time also when the friends of Jesus are getting fearful for the future and the bonds between them together seem to be breaking up that Jesus gathers them together to give thanks, to break the bread. This is my body. To take wine. This is my blood. Eat together like this and always remember me. They share the meal together. So often it is in the sharing of food in company, thanking God for its bodily and spiritual nourishment that Jesus shares himself and reveals himself. But then Jesus goes a step further. Their strong, charismatic leader, the one whom they leaned on, is now on his knees on the floor like a slave, someone who wouldn't even merit their notice or attention, and he's washing their feet. To serve is the example set by Jesus, but also to be served. Often it's as hard to be served and to put ourselves in the hands of others as to serve others. John has been described as the gospel of relationship. The word finds flesh within communities where people live together as friends, bound together in the spirit of friendship. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. This is the challenge of Jesus who calls us to be friends and to put our hand in the hand of Jesus and to allow him to be friends with us. To be friends is not primarily doing things for or to others. Perhaps the secret of love is to reveal to others and allow others to reveal to us that we are beautiful and precious to each other and to God. In order to belong, there has to be a sense that we're missed when we're not there. Like the disciples, we are in our own upper rooms now and having to keep our distance. And yet we need not withdraw from each other. Monday Thursday reminds us that love is possible, even when, like the disciples, we are most under pressure. We are not called by God, said Jean Vanier. We are not called by God to do extraordinary things. 
but to do ordinary things with extraordinary love. Never have the words from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi more resonance now as we uh, hear or say together this creed. Though he, he was divine, divine he, did he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. On this night, traditionally, we remember this mandate to serve, the importance that Jesus attached to the act of service, to serve and to allow ourselves to be served and to give thanks. If you are not alone, take a few minutes perhaps to serve each other in a simple way. You might choose to wash each other's feet or each other's hands. Traditionally it's been feet but perhaps now the importance of hands uh, is almost all the more to the fore. You might spend some moments to Pray for the needs of others and how we might serve at this time of isolation. at this time more than ever in this symbolic act of hand washing for us the reality of hand washing is a way in which we are serving others in more profound and wide-reaching ways than we ever thought possible lord jesus christ you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters we do also for you give us the will to be the servants of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. May we know the peace of the Lord would be with us this night. Our Father Amen. in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others, despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one to whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Basan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potshed, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircle me. My hands and feet are shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes amongst themselves. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. And it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. 